All right, guys, so what we've done is uh, Al's taken out the contents of his bag. There's uh, there's more stuff here I can see that uh, wasn't in that in the bag previous, and there's a reason for that. Yeah, absolutely. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to sort it out on onto different categories where if I'm going to be out in this environment or if I'm going to go out at any time, there's certain items that you want to have. Some are simple, some are a bit more complex. It depends on your comfort zone, what you can afford, and what you think you're going to need based on what you're going to do. Absolutely. And affordability is a big thing. I, I know I've spent a lot of money on gear and most of it I probably <laughs> didn't need. And I, some of it I don't even, I still to this day don't even use. Um, I bring it with me to make myself feel better. But you do have options. In, in previous video you talked about using a garbage bag as a, as a shelter or even as a sleeping bag. I mean, you can find other ways of using uh, cheap stuff, right? Absolutely. Like for a lot of years I couldn't afford a lot of the fancier items so I was always just big bum borrowing and stealing stuff that was pretty much what I was using and you know what it worked uh, you could buy a real fancy tarp and then during the night a piece of branch can come down because of the wind punch a hole right through that fancy tarp and it's gonna hurt and if I, I take out an old piece of garbage bag or an old tarp I got from someplace and I put it up in the tree and the same thing happens well, I just put duct tape on it and carry on it doesn't mean nothing to me and it doesn't hurt as much it doesn't hurt as much <laughs> so how have you uh, categorized your uh, your stuff now in so, your bag so what I've tried to do is every time I go out the specific items that I, I want to bring with me because a lot of times too is uh, you know I'll, I'll bring somebody along or sometimes what happens is you run into somebody out there and they don't have something so I'm always about sharing giving stuff this kind of stuff but a lot of times I've seen things go good and I've seen things go bad so when things go bad it's always nice to reach down and have that extra little bit of something. It, it's not only a safety thing, it's a comfort thing at the same time. Right. Uh, so what I always try to make sure is I always try to make sure I have a tool. So the tool can be as simple as, you know, just my knife. Uh, I don't have a very big knife. It's a little more knife I've had for years, but you know what? It works. Doesn't have to be fancy, didn't cost me a lot. Uh, I have a lot of knives. I have some very expensive knives, but I always seem to migrate back to the same little simple ones because they work. Um, now, now what about the guy that says, uh, you know, that's not a full tang knife. Uh, what, what if you run into a problem where your, your handle breaks? So what do you say to people that, that will talk about things like that? Well, that's true. And you know what? I've seen that happen. I've had knives break. Um, so that's why, I mean, there's other options. So instead of using my knife, a smaller knife for a bigger, bigger chore, I'll get a bigger tool for that chore. Right. So, I mean, a folding saw to me, I think is, is one of the greatest inventions you can use for the bush because if I don't have to chop in the bush or I don't have to take out a sharp implement, I would rather do that. A saw is sharp, but the chances of me getting cut with this are a lot less than with, say, my tomahawk. My hands are cold, maybe you're cold to start with, you haven't slept very well. Swinging a tomahawk is going to cause me a little bit more grief than, you know, being on one knee and using my saw very small, very simple. It's going to allow me to, to manage smaller stuff as opposed to trying to take bigger things down with the tomahawk. So both are a must have in your bag? Both are a must have. So. Um, having a knife, I'm always a big fan of trying to have a smaller knife so it's easier to work with, easier to craft and stuff, and then have the next size of tool for probably the majority of your things. When I go in the bush, I try not to build a log cabin because I don't think I need one. So I try to keep things small, keep them simple, try to think of what I actually need for the time I'm there. Years ago, I seen people make huge shelters and were only there for 12 hours. So they probably spent six or seven hours of hard work for the 12 hours they're gonna be there. Right. Before I go into an area, so if we were gonna go into this area, I would take out my uh, mapping program and I always like to make sure that I have a map of the area. I like to have one of the area I'm probably gonna work in and one as an overview, a little bit eight or 10 miles around me. And then at the same time, I've got a 3D mapping program. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll print out a 3D map and it'll give me the opportunity to see the elevation, the wind currents, this kind of stuff, which gives me a bit more insight into the area of what, what's gonna be in front of me when I get there. Should I change a couple of these priorities based on that now, see? Right. So navigation is a big thing. I'm a big fan of having a compass. Any compass that's uh, accurate is, is a good thing to have in the bush. You can get low-end compasses and high-end compasses. Uh, I'm always a big fan of spending good money on a good compass because when I'm stuck and I'm using my compass and I need to get to where I want to be, I want to make sure that I'm getting there. This little cup here, little Sierra cup, is a cool little cup. I've used it for years. I've had about six of them. Uh, this one's all been bent and banged and that kind of stuff. Um, this size of cup is good. It's perfect. It'll fit in my pocket. It's easy to put in my pack. Doesn't take a lot of room. It's not going to break. I've used it for digging, this kind of stuff. Um, years later, when I was in the military, we started having these kind of cups. I love these kind of cups. I've used them for so many things. Yeah. So uh, this is a small cup. It's going to pack easier. This is going to take a bit more room. This, I can put a lot of stuff inside this. 
So that's kind of working for me. But at the end of the day, a good quality cup, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Absolutely. If you can afford this, that's good. But if you can find one of these, this is still going to do the same job. It's not going to give you uh, the hot water volume that you want, but it's still going to boil water. So you got uh, fire starting stuff? Yes, absolutely. You can get fire starting from Bic lighters to high end type fire starters. There's different uh, ferrocerium sticks. There's low ends, there's high end ones. There's some small ones, there's some big ones. Uh, fire pistons, fire fire pumps, you can get all kinds of matches, stuff. Uh, matches still matches work? still work good. <laughs> Obviously, you're big on first aid, as we should all be. Yeah, uh, one of the things I try to uh, pass along is the best suggestion I can to folks is, when you're on the side of the road, if you get into trouble, you call 911, you got roadside service. If we were to go four or five miles into the bush and we get into trouble, we don't have that option. Um, I have a sat phone here uh, that I can call somebody and say, you know what, I'm in a crisis, I need help. Uh, a lot of people have their cell phones today. A lot of times you have cell coverage. That makes a difference. But most things that I think are going to cause people grief from getting home is going to be first aid. You need to have something for trauma. And I'm a big fan of go big and then work your way down to small. So if it's a small cut, I can put a big band-aid on it. But if it's a big cut, I can't put a small band-aid on it. Correct. I like the trauma bandages as my go-to. Uh, this is one that usually stays in my cargo pocket. There's an elastic on it. It's got a, a package. It's, it's clear so I can see what's in it. It's clean all the time. It's going to be dry. This one happens to be a combat gauze with trauma. So if I get a bad cut, I can put the combat gauze on. It's going to stop the bleeding and I can put the trauma bandage on it. And even if I have nothing else, I can just use the elastic to hold it till I get to my pack or whatever. Now I notice on a lot of uh, your stuff, you have elastics uh, around them. And I know you mentioned to me before, even uh, for uh, if you have a finger cut or something, and you needed to use the elastics to slow down the bleeding or stop the bleeding. Uh, like a tourniquet almost. Yeah. Uh, it's helpful. It can be used for a lot of things, I guess, too. It's right? used for a lot of things. Um, I, I mean, I've come to the idea of elastics because I've seen the functionality of them. Uh, even myself being in the bush, I've, I've done a lot of work with my knife. I've crafted a lot of things, but still sometimes you slip or just that little thing happens. Something just as easy as taking my suspenders with the elastic, putting it around my finger, I can stop the bleeding. And you even have an elastic and, there. And I even got an elastic <laughs> here. So I, I keep a little bit of gear closest to me because I've seen lots of little things give me grief. Uh, first aid, of course, is going to be something that is really going to shut down a trip pretty fast. Absolutely. So I try to make sure that I've got a small kit, I've got a medium kit, and I've got a larger kit. If no. I don't need it, it's really just bulk. It's not an issue. Years ago, uh, I was kind of budget restraint. So I would get these little clear garbage bags and I could get them in the fall on sale. So the nice thing about this is uh, because they're clear, I can still see around me, which I liked. I didn't like to close off from the outside world. But a little sheet of plastic like this, all I have to do is block the wind or block the rain. Right. And that's really all I want to want to get out of it. Because I'm not going to be there for four or five weeks. It's not going to be a, a semi-permanent kind of deal. It's probably going to be no more than 48 hours in the one spot. So a small little gar garbage bag is economical. Uh, if I tear it, I rip it, doesn't mean nothing to me. I can bring two or three of these. Uh, I always bring a smaller bag. If I find some tinder in the bush, just certainly my tinder bag. If I find some garbage in the bush that somebody's left in front of me, I'll pick Shocking. it up, take it with me. A little tarp. I mean, if you want to purchase a little tarp, there's high-end tarps and there's low-end tarps. This is a low-end tarp. This is next to nothing for price. Both are going to do the exact same thing for you. Right. And, and the one thing I try to uh, mention to folks is a lot of times people think to go in the outdoors, they have to spend a lot of money. Years ago when I started in the outdoors, I didn't have a lot of money, so whatever I could kind of make work for me was good enough. As time goes by, you're going to find the things that work for you, things that don't work for you, or you're going to change your priorities based on your environment or your needs. And you might say, you know what, I'm finding that I'm using a tarp a lot. I'm using these garbage bags a lot. So every time I go out, that's something I'm finding I need. So spending your money on that item is good value because you're using it all the time and buying a little bit more expensive item, you're probably gonna get more out of it and you're gonna be more conscientious of how you use it because you spent good money on it. This is very important this time of year, socks and uh, wool socks and nice and warm. Um, how much extra clothing are you bringing uh, when you're out in the woods at this time of year in the, in the winter? Uh, usually what I try to do is I try to layer, like, like sometimes I'll have three or four layers on. And the reason why I do that is if we were working hard to get in here and we were snowshoeing and it was three feet of snow and we're breaking trail, we're going to sweat a lot. So it, it really doesn't matter. Like a lot of people will say, well, I want to wear wool because it, it's still warm when it's wet. That's not necessarily true. Right. Um, so what I like to do is sometimes what I'll do is some of these new fabrics, new th synthetics and stuff will do a lot for you, but some layer is always going to get wet. It's always going to trap the moisture, this kind of stuff. So what I like to do is having enough layers on that if we stopped right now and we wanted to have a cup of tea, I could take one of those layers off, put it up in the tree and maybe for the 
half hour or 45 minutes I'm here in the direct sun it's going to do a lot and I can put that as an outer layer now and the next layer moves closer so I try to work more with as many layers as I could have on me and then at the same time if I think I'm going to be bushwhacking I've got an old Carhartt coat that for me when I'm bushwhacking if I rub up against something or I, I get a stick puncturing it and stuff or this thing's full of holes um, I would rather that take the abuse than the stuff closest to my skin. So I'm a big fan of having a couple pairs of socks. Uh, I like to have a pair that I can change. So if I broke through the ice right now and my feet were wet, uh, the garbage bags are good too because sometimes what I've done is I put the garbage bag over my feet, put my socks on, put the garbage bags on, put my foot in the boots. That's, that's one of my tricks, by the way. You saw it in one of our videos. So what I like to do is I like to make sure I got warm socks on. And a lot of times what I like to do is I can take these socks I can make a little rack in the bush and I can put it near a fire, I can warm the sock on, put it on. And I can also roll up the sock and put it under my armpits. So if I'm getting cold, I can put this under and they're warm. Cordage. Uh, I like to make sure that I've got cordage with me in the bush for a variety of reasons, obviously. Uh, recently I took a good spill and broke my pack and a piece of cordage rigged it all back up for me. Cordage is great. I like the parachute cord because it's strong, it's robust, it's fairly inexpensive. I also like the elastic cord. This stuff here for me works pretty good. I usually have it on the outside of my bag, as you can see. If I take a layer off because I'm walking and I'm warm, I can roll that layer up, put it under the bungee cord, mm. and I can let it Very dry. Very handy. I have a secondary bag. So this little bag here is whatever I want for priorities based on the season that I think that I need for safety. I've got the smaller version in here. So if I've got this knife on me, or if I don't want this knife, if I want a multi-tool or just a small folding knife, I'll have a smaller version in here. Whatever I have for fire starter, I'll have a fire starter in here. Whatever I have for a mirror or a signaling system, whether it be a, a glow stick or a mirror or a whistle, I'll have a small version in here. And that's something you'll keep on your person? That's something that I'll keep all the time. And that's the reason for the string. So I could put this string around me okay, like this. And I can tuck this into this pocket and it's a non-issue. Well, thanks for uh, for coming on the channel again. And I appreciate uh, doing this series with you. I'm learning a lot. I hope you are as well. I look forward to uh, our next time meeting up. Catch us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we do have a website, uh, ptloutdoors.com. And uh, subscribe and like the videos. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care, guys. Thanks for having me. See you when I see you.